All right, we have a 90 degree spotting drill here and the relief that you see is so that I can go deeper than the diameter without rubbing on the sides of the drill and it then acts like a uh, boring bar but I'm only going to go to the full 500 diameter size so that's what we're looking at here next tool in line is a high speed steel dual 45 degree chamfer tool but I'm not going to use it for a chamfer tool in this situation Seeing that it's a dual 45, it's exactly the same angle as the spot drill just placed in it. I'm looking for a real thin edge on the front. I think we're just about there. Let's just remove a whole bunch of that brass because this stuff peels off so nice. Why not? I'm going to start in a plunge up and I'm going to back up to the edge that I just formed by turning the OD. This is all being done by eye. We're going to bring it into just about a feather edge right there. A little bit deeper and sweep back with the carriage until the two surfaces blend. Watch the line go away. Just about there it is. Remove some of the material so that when you plunge, it's only plunging on one side of the tool. Come back and erase it. Remove the material. Back in and plunge. Bring it back to the original, blend it. That's all I'm doing here. I'm plunging in and moving down and back out. As that neck diameter gets smaller, you have to be very careful how much surface contact you make. Or you could have the part climb up and over the form tool and blow up in your face. I'd like to take that down just a little bit more, maybe a couple more cuts. And moving the carriage out till it blends. If it gets really small and you make full contact with the large side of that form tool, you can kiss that piece goodbye. It will climb up and over and snap right off. All right, well, that's close enough for now. to remove a majority of the material on the uh, stem portion. Got to back the tool out and remove some of the major diameter because the raw material here is now into the non-cutting geometry of this particular tool bit. see how far down I can push my luck. Now at this point you got to keep in mind that the mass that's spinning on the outside of the tool is got a great potential to start the helicopter run eccentric because of the weight and if this were a much larger diameter I would be inclined to slow the RPM down so that it didn't start to oscillate and ultimately self-destruct from the weight. I am being exceptionally careful not to hit that rear chamfer feature with this form tool. That would probably be a bad thing if it happened. It looks a lot like a funnel at this moment. And if I was making a funnel, this is probably exactly how I would do it. That tool is tilted at about a 10 degree angle for a reason. I do not want a square corner where I'm headed with this. And the back side of this tool is just a little too big in order to get down into the undercut. Eyeballing the diameter that I'm looking for. I want something a little bit bigger than the mouth of the funnel. Or excuse me, a little smaller. So this is strictly by eye until it looks good. Just a little smaller than the diameter. The outer diameter of the funnel is exactly what I'm looking for. All right, we're going to throw a quick relief on the back corner of that tool. Drop it back on the tool holder with a relieved corner. So now I can get down to where the original dual 45 tool made that undercut. I'll get in there by eye to start, but 
I will grab a jeweler's loop and hold the jeweler's loop directly over the tip of this tool. You'll see me come here in a second with the loop. Watch for the black shadow. There it comes. All right. I am holding a loop right over the tip of that tool and coming in with the cross slide ever so gently until I see a witness mark show up on the diameter that's already turned, the smaller diameter. And when I see any kind of movement, any kind of chip forming on the face of that tool, I'm good. Leave it alone. Put the loop down, finish off the smaller diameter to the face. A little bit of contact, and out we go. The tool that I just used had a much nicer edge prep. All I'm doing right now is blending the two surfaces so that they look like one. And this file has the teeth filed off or ground off of either side of the file. Not on the large face, but the small face, so I can bump up against the material without leaving scars in it. And you got to deburr a part like this while it's uh, in this state because you're not going to get a second chance. Once it comes off of there, you're not going to put it back in the machine with any type of uh, success. Initial plunge on the party tool is also by eye. Going to be about 30 thousandths away from where the 10 degree surface matches the cylindrical diameter at the end. 400 emery, just taking some of the lines out of it ever so gently. Very superficial plunge, give me some idea how thick the bottom is. Small carriage shift back, thin it out a little bit. Right now I'm just feeling for vibration. As this starts to get thinner, the last thing I want to see is this start to pinwheel and launch. Now's the time that you deburr the outside. And let's push the parting tool all the way through. Ideally, the burr stays on the large material in the collet, but that is not the way this parting tool is ground. I'm sure that the burr will stay with the part. Yes, it did. All right, let's take it over the sander, knock it far off. That edge is so fine that any contact with the belt sander will really show up in the final part. So I am just taking the majority of it off to begin with. I'll finish it off on my bandsaw with another piece of 240. This says, pinch it between my fingernails and float it across. You can feel that little remnant from the parting tool starting to go away and when it finally goes away it'll slide nice and smooth. Quick look at the bottom to confirm. No lines, no burrs, nothing. Ah, uh, there we go. Add a couple of miniature ice cubes. <laughs> this is actually white uh, styrofoam, high density styrofoam that I cut with a razor blade. What you're witnessing is half cabin fever and half COVID lockdown stress. And in honor of my wife, we're going to make it look like a cosmopolitan. This is actually Gatorade coming in through a 1 8 tube. And no drink is complete without a cocktail stir. And that stir is a piece of aluminum ceiling hanger wire. It's about 25 thousandths in diameter. I was actually looking for sound effects of stirring a drink and ice cubes dropping, but couldn't find it. 
No, we're just going to have to deal with the uh, use your imagination. Once again, sequence is everything. Use the right tools in the right uh, order. And if your grandkids see this video, they're going to want you to make a full place setting for the Barbie house. So keep this one under wraps. Just a little bit of fun to start the weekend. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for stopping by.